Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Assalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Rabbi sirli sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul 'uqdatam min lisaani yafqahu qawli. The topic of my today's talk is the power of dua and the salah. If you read in a Quran in Surah Ghafir, verse number 60, Allah said, Ad'uni astajib lakum. Allah says, if you ask me, and I will give you. Now from this verse, we can understand the one who hears us, the one who wants to give us, is no other than but Allah. He is the only one who is the sustainer. He is the only one who is a doer. He is the only one who listens to our dua. We should not say, Oh, Allah does not listen to my dua. Because when we say that Allah does not listen to me dua, astaghfirullah na'ud billah, that means Allah cannot hear na'ud billah. We should say that, always recite, say that, Oh, Allah, please accept my dua. But rather than saying, Oh, Allah does not listen, and Allah does not accept my dua. Because these words are like kufr. We should always make recitation and keep our connection with Allah by saying, Oh Ya Allah, please accept my dua. Because no one is near than who understand our heart other than Allah. Because Allah says, Nanu akrabu alayhi min hablil warid. Allah is more than anyone who knows about what's in our heart. If you read in Surah Mulk, verse number 30, 13, Allah says, alimu bazati sudur. It is only Allah, what, He knows what's in our heart. So we need to build our connection, we need to make our dua a more powerful. Now to make a dua more powerful, we have to go to back, I'm going to talk about Surah Fatiha. We know that there are so many benefits, there are so many virtues about Surah Fatiha. We know that we use the Surah Fatiha for, um, for healing, also somebody sick, we recite on a water, we blow on a water and give to the sick. And also it is also called Umm al-Qur'an, uh, um al that like it's a beginning. But at the same time, Surah Fatiha by itself, it's a dua. And also at the same time, it also teaches us how to make a dua. Nobody understand that because Surah Fatiha has two things. Number one, Surah Fatiha itself is a dua. Number two, Surah Fatiha teach us how to make a dua. We can divide in Surah Fatiha into two parts. Like for example, in the first few verses, it talks about you have to praise Allah. What is the first verse? It says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. That means the first word it says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. All praises is due to Allah alone, nobody else. It's the same as saying as La ilaha illallah, nothing. So that means every time we make a dua, the problem that we have, some of the Muslims, we have a problem, including myself, I have the same problem sometimes, because shaitan doesn't want us to connect ourselves with Allah. So he distract us into other things and, and he whisper with our heart to to destroy our connection with Allah. In the first verse, it says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The way we start our dua is to say, Oh Ya Allah, we, start, we have to praise Allah. Oh Ya Allah, you give me the life. Oh Ya Allah, it is you who is sustaining me. You are, who, you are the only one who knows what is good for me and what is bad for me. If you read in, in Surah Baqarah, Allah says, if you, if you like something, and if you do not like something, because there's no one other than Allah knows what is good for you, because think about something. Everyone in the entire world, Muslim or the non-Muslim, they ask for money. Everyone asks for money, life, good life, sustenance, and everything. Now imagine something. If everyone is dua is accepted in the entire world, so the entire world becomes like an entire flood. 
Everybody's rich. Because all of you in the masjid maybe have the same duas, right? So that means there's no flexibility in, in the dunya. So all of them, let's say, all of them ask for $1,000. So all the masjid has a $1,000. So that means, what is, what is the trial in the dunya then? Because if you read in Surah Mulk, verse number two, Allah says, Allahzi khalq al mawta wal hayata layyabulwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. I have created you just so that you can do my ibadah. I didn't create you to go to the world and start establishing a life with the money and with the power because I'm sure everyone has the same thing. I do have the same thing, you have the same thing, but you have, everyone has the same thing. But Allah says, I created you with the test. With the test means we have to be have a sabr and we have to be thankful to Allah all the time. Remember something when we go back to the Surah Al Baqarah in verse number 16 and the 17 when Allah rejected Iblis. He said, I'm going to full of entire humanity and only the people, if you read the last part of the Surah Al Baqarah, verse number 17, it says, Wala tajidu aksaram The only the people who is going to be surviving are the people who are who has a shukr, who, who are the sabir. And if you read in Surah Al Baqarah, verse number 15, 55, Allah says, uh, Give the glad tidings for, to those people who has a sabr. So I'm going to come back with the Surah Fatiha, how we do should do a dua? Because the majority of the people does not know. I have seen people making a dua. For example, I'm sorry to say, but I have seen people. They're making a dua, starting directly. You say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Oh ya Allah, I have this problem. Oh ya Allah, I have this problem. Surah Fatiha teaches how to make a dua. The first thing, you start praising Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. How do we start our dua? Oh Ya Allah, you give me the life. Oh Ya Allah, each breath that I'm taking, you are the one who gave me. If you want, you can take my breath right away. If you read in Surah Kaf, verse number 16 and the 17, Allah says, وَجَاءَ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ Allah says, when, when the Malqal Moth will come, your breath will stop, your time is ended. So we don't know that. Even it says in the hadith, even the last piece of the food it will not go into your mouth if it is not into your destiny. If you eat your last piece of food, your life can be go. Because Allah has destined all our everything in our mother's womb. When we die, what are we going to get in this dunya and everything? But what do we have to focus? We have to focus our connection with Allah, not with the dunya. Because Allah says, I promise you, what is destined to you in this dunya, you're going to get it. it, is, it even, you, even you work day and night, if Allah says you're going to get a $10, you're not going to get $11. By working in the entire, the entire life, you work like 12 hours a day, 15 hours a day. If Allah says this person is going to get $10, I'm not going to give him $11, you're not going to get $11. Because it's all, it is already destined in your mother's womb, what are you going to get? We have to build our connection with Allah. How is our connection with Allah? The way we make a dua, we have to fix our connection first. We start our dua by praising Allah. Oh ya Allah, you are the only one. You gave me the life, you are sustaining me, you are giving me everything, alhamdulillah for everything. In any status, alhamdulillah for everything. Because remember something. Shaitan wants you to do kufr. When we say, oh ya Allah, I don't have this, I don't have this. When you cry for something, you don't have it. Shaitan gets happy. Because remember something, there's something called inside, it's called ruh. He wants to impure your ruh by disobeying Allah's commandments. And how he, dis how he makes you disobey that? He makes you say some of the words of kufr. Oh ya Allah, I don't have that. I wish I have that. I wish I have that. But rather we say, Alhamdulillah. Forever. In, in, in any status, you have less, say Alhamdulillah. Because this life is a test. You're not here for, to become a millionaire. For an example, you get a one million dollar. When you, anyone realize something, when you came into this world, we don't even have a clothes. Somebody gave us a clothes. Somebody washed us, washed us, right? So when we die, Somebody removes our clothes, somebody washed us. When we leave the dunya, somebody is taking care of that. So what happens to that million dollar? Who took that? Maybe gone to your family? 
They spread it around. Maybe the bank took it. Where it is gone, nobody. What, 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 do we, what did we take with us? It is our amal. Our connection with Allah. Because this is the trial in this dunya, what we are taking with us. So going back to the Surah Fatiha, I have seen so many people, people are directly saying, after saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, oh ya Allah, I need this, I need this, I need this. But rather, think about something. You're in dunya. How many people have a business, right? Some many people have a stores. And some of the people, they have a boss, they're doing a job for other one, right? So think of something. You go to your boss, you are, you want to get some kind of help from your boss. Imagine something, when you talking to your boss, let's say he's my boss, I want to have help from him. And I'm scratching my head over here, I'm watching here and there, oh my boss, I need the help, oh my boss, I need the help. The boss will think, oh, is he crazy? He has no manners, he does not have an etiquette, he does not know how to ask. Now think about something. We are standing before Allah, who is our creator. So we have to be very humble. We have to be very, very, have a strong connection with Allah when we make a dua. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Oh ya Allah, be very humble in your voice. Sit down. Remember something. When we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, shaitan will take you away from the masallah. Why? Because that's a time. Remember, many scholars say, dua is a weapon of a believer. It's a weapon. And the shaitan does not want you to use the weapon. He wants you to get out from there when you say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, when, you, alaykum, when it's a time to talk to you, God, he takes you away. Sit on the masala when you say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, sit down there and talk to Allah. Say a few du'as of, from Quran, from Sunnah du'as, and then say, Oh ya Allah, I'm so much thankful for you. You give me the food, you give me the bread, you give me the tawfiq to come to the masjid. You made me Muslim. It's a great blessing that we are born into the Muslim family. Right? When we make a dua, we need to ask to be very, very humble. We start from our beautiful world. Think of an example of dunya. When we talk to our boss, right? When we talk to our boss, we tell them, oh, boss, you know, I have a problem. Please, you know, you help me a lot. You gave me the job and this and that. But when it comes to we talking to our creator, we say, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, we start complaining. We start complaining. We need to start something with a beautiful way. Remember something, Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. We need to say, memorize the 99 names of Allah. Because one of the hadiths, the Prophet said, those, those, the one who memorized the 99 names of Allah and attributes and apply them to their life, he's going to be granted a Jannah. jannah. So we start with the beautiful name. Oh ya Allah, you are Rahman, you are Rahim, you are Malik al Quddus, as Salam, al Mumin, Muhammad, al Aziz, al Jabbar, al Mutakabbir. We need to see all these names, beautiful words. Oh ya Allah, sing by all these words. Look at the, the first verses of Surah Fatiha. It says, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We start with the Oh ya Allah, thank you so much. You gave me so much. You gave me the bread. You gave me aqal. You gave me everything. You are Rahman, you are Rahim, you are the one who is a judgment. Oh yeah Allah, my body, my life is everything for you. It's nothing for me. Everything is for you. You know it says in Surah Zariyat, verse number 56, Allah says, Wa jinna wal insa illa liyabadun. Illa. Illa means Nothing else. In the dunya, you were born to worship Allah. Then Allah promised your sustenance. It is not you promise yourself. You sacrifice for Allah and He is going to be the one who is going to do it for you. He is open the door for you. When you read, when you read in the Surah Talaq, verse number, one, uh, verse number 2, Allah says, when you, uh, when you have a taqwa inside you, Allah opens the doors for you, for the, what is good for you. It is not something you're going to get a billionaire, but he is going to sustain you. That's a promise of Allah. If it is written in your destiny, he's going to give you. But in Surah Yunus, if you read in verse number 10, verse number 110, Allah says, Allah says, if I want to benefit you, you are living a life according to me, then there is no way the entire world gets together to benefit you. And the entire world get together, they will not be able to harm you. It is you are the one who has to give your life to me and I promise you take care of, your, take care of you and your family. 
What is destined for you? And in, if you read in Surah Fatiha, these are the verses Allah says, it is finished up to and then the next part of the Surah Fatiha. What, what is it? Oh Ya Allah, make my life the way you want it. Make my life the way you want it. Like those people, on the people, you have sent your blessings upon them. Make my life from them. So similarly, when we make a dua to Allah, we need to start with the beautiful, with the words, thanking Allah for everything. And then, in the half, then you say, Oh, yeah, Allah, you know that I have this problem. Please help me, something. But remember something. If you ask something, we don't know that it is good for us or if it is not. There are many stages of dua. There are many stages of dua. Like, your dua is totally accepted. And the other hand, maybe your dua is totally rejected. And the other thing, maybe your dua is accepted, but Allah has put it everything into the storage to give you on the day of judgment. Maybe also your dua is rejected, maybe because you are doing something wrong that is Allah doesn't like. But there's, a, there's a many factors and barriers in the dua. So I think it is really too late right now. The second part is going to be the next Juma. Please visit and tell others to visit. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.